Well, uh, I'm not really sure who the agency is that I should address this video to because I'm not really sure who uh, is the employer of Martin Richling. I know it's not the Lord, but uh, I've been doing some research into this guy. And uh, it's interesting because I had heard Sam Gipp uh, came out with a video against Steven Anderson and he said about how that years and years ago he had told his wife that uh, there would come a day, he said, I bet you there's going to come a day when the devil's going to raise up people that act like they're King James Bible believers in an effort to make us look bad. And he said that he believes that Stephen Anderson is one of them. I agree 100% with that. And also you have Westboro Baptist Church, you know, and uh, they're not Baptist and they're not Christian. They hate the Jews and they're, you know, hyper-Calvinist and a whole bunch of other things. You know, and, you know, I've seen guys street preaching against them and they'll, they'll start swearing at the street preachers, you know, using profanity. They're not saved. And, uh, you know, Stephen Anderson uses profanity too when you push him hard enough. But uh, Martin Richling, uh, you know, honestly, you know, anybody that would think that that guy is saved, I feel real bad for you because he fails so many tests of Scripture uh, that prove whether or not somebody's saved. You see, there's something within us Christians that government operatives or uh, Jesuit, undercover Jesuits, they can't fake one thing within a Christian. And that is the Holy Spirit of witness. They aren't able to do that. And you see, those of you out there that have listened to my sermons, listened to my preaching, and I preach something, say something from the Word of God, and you're going through that thing in your life or, or you're thinking the same thing or whatever else, you see, that's the Holy Spirit coming through my mouth because I'm getting it from the book and he's testifying and bearing witness to the Holy Spirit that's within you. Okay, It's the same Spirit that abides in the church. That's why you can come to a Bible-believing ministry like mine and the Holy Spirit bears witness. You go, oh yeah, wow, that's so good. That's so true. Yeah, that's exactly, I've been through that same thing. Wow, yeah. See, now you can get somebody that can train themselves to look like a King James Bible believer, but they can't fake that Holy Spirit bearing witness. And I know I've been contacted from people, brothers and sisters, from other countries even, not just America, and they say that they try to watch this Martin Richling and they can't even watch the guy. Within five or so minutes they're going, oh, oh this guy just so filled with just vile hatred, anger, just, he's so bitter, he just, he's disgusting. You know why? Because it's not the Holy Spirit that's within this man. It's a spirit of a devil. You know? And I'll grant you, he looks like he might be a King James Bible believer, but when you start to add up everything and you actually listen to the guy, you go, wait a second here, uh-uh. And you say, well, uh, could you give us some examples of scripture that prove that this man is false? That he's a false prophet. Absolutely. We're going to look at a couple things here. John chapter 10. I want to show you the very first thing that convinced me that this man is a lost, hell-bound sinner. John chapter 10, verse 11 and 12. says here, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Okay? Now, first of all, let me just explain something. When a preacher is preaching the word, I am not the shepherd of the sheep in terms of on the same level as Jesus Christ. All right, Jesus Christ is perfect, I'm not. I'll make mistakes sometimes. I don't preach 100% pure, perfect doctrine. Jesus Christ did. He was truth manifested in the flesh. I can make mistakes, okay? But, but, I am in that same kind of a thing there where I'm supposed to watch over the flock that the Lord has given me. What did he tell Peter after he was, you know, ascended up from, you know, raised from the dead? He said, feed my sheep, that's my job. I'm supposed to feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. You know, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to feed you the Word of God. And with, you know, over 400 videos, I think that there's plenty of, a, you know, a good meal out there for you if you want to be fed. You come to this channel, you're not going to get a lot of fluff, you're going to get a lot of scripture. 
you're going to get a lot of years and years and years of research. I researched for probably almost 10 years before I even went into ministry. So if you know, if you've been around the ministry, you know that you get fed here. All right? I'm doing my job. I'm not a hireling. And by the way, it says here, when the hireling is there, and he doesn't really care for the sheep, he's just there for the income, the wolf comes and the hireling runs away from the wolf. Now, Martin Richling is a wolf. And I'm not about to run away from this little dweeb, okay? This little nothing. This little lost sinner that's got major anger issues, okay? I'm not going to run away from this little jerk. All right, I'm going to confront him and I'm going to show you that he is a false prophet. But did you notice there what the wolf does? It says, when the hireling leaves the sheep and fleeth, the wolf catcheth them, the sheep, and scattereth the sheep. Who does the wolf go after? The sheep. And I would not have even given this Martin Richling the time of day if it hadn't been for the fact that he's attacking the sheep. I don't appreciate that. And you see, a legitimate ministry does not need to go and attack the following. I have never one time, never once, have I gotten onto somebody else's channel and gone and, and contacted all the people that are commenting positively and tried to turn them to my channel. I've never once had to do that. You know why? Because the Lord bears witness to the truth. I don't need to go along and try to steal somebody else's congregation, somebody else's flock. I don't need to try and steal them and try to go after the sheep. So see, by this test right here in John chapter 10, Martin Richling proves that he is a wolf, that he is a false prophet. Hey, hey there, Marty. If you're preaching the truth, why don't you just preach it? If you have the truth, if you're, the, if you're this great man of God, that God showed you these wonderful things while you were in federal prison, which we're going to be talking about that in a minute, if, if you're such a great man of God, then just preach the word and God will bring the increase. The Lord will bring people to you because you're spreading the truth. You don't need to go and attack somebody else's ministry by going after the sheep and sending private messages and sending links to your stupid video attacking me personally. You don't need to do that. You see, right there, test number one, you just proved that you're a wolf. You proved that you're not right with God. All right, and uh, talking about the federal prison thing, I have right here an article. This is the, uh, where is it here? Tribune, Chicago Tribune, I think it is. Judge gives former cop 57 months. I'm going to put it up on screen. Ex-Melrose Park officer convicted in shakedowns. A former Melrose po Park police officer who was convicted of shaking down an illegal immigrant involved in a hit-and-run accident and the mother of a crack cocaine addict was sentenced Thursday to nearly five years in prison. U.S. District Judge Blanche Manning called Martin Richling and a second ex-Melrose police officer who was convicted with him a, quote, two-man crime wave. This is the pastor. The public society put trust in you to serve and protect them, and you violated that trust in the worst way, Manning said uh, moments before she imposed, uh, I think they have that wrong there, Manning said, uh, oh, Blanche Manning, okay, sorry, Manning said moments before she imposed the 57-month prison term. She also fined Richling $5,000. Last November, a federal jury in Chicago convicted Richling and co-defendant Nick Filskov, now both 35, on one count each of racketeering, extortion, and conspiracy to violate the civil rights of the extortion victims. This is June 20th, 1997, by the way. So if you look at Martin Richling, he's obviously older than 35 now. But the point is there, racketeering, extortion, and conspiracy is what Martin Richling was convicted of. And you say, well, brother, that was in his past. That's before he got saved. Yeah, but uh, if you look at another website, which I'm going to show you, um, he does not repent of that. He says that he was working with the FBI to, to, to expose corrupt police officers, and the FBI turned on him, and therefore he got framed and went to jail as a result. Okay, even if that was true, what did Stephen say when he was being stoned to death? He said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. 
What did Jesus Christ say when he was dying on the cross? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Even if you were framed Martin Richling, even if that was true, where's your spirit of forgiveness? And I highly doubt that you were framed. I think that you're a crooked cop. And it comes through in the way you, you know, preach. You just, you act just like a crooked cop. Chicago Mafia, you know, on the payroll of the Chicago Mafia kind of a cop. You know? And you see, a real Christian can look at you and they can see right through your little thin veneer to the anger and the hatred that you have underneath. Before we continue here, I want to show you something else that's very interesting. I got on this, uh, there was this really new age, I had all these weird, wacko new agers, you know, on this radio station, and Martin Richling's on the thing, and they say, oh, he's no longer broadcasting. But I want to show you something very interesting here about what he says in his profile. Look at this, it talks about, here you can see, I'm going to put the screen thing up. It says here that when he was young, he was raised as a Roman Catholic, and he wanted to be a Jesuit priest when he got older. Um, maybe he got his wish. Do you think? I mean, if Martin Richling was a Jesuit, if he was a Jesuit plant, and they said, we want you to act like you're a King James Bible believer, you say, okay, let's do a criminal investigation here. Let's think about this. What would be the point of Martin Richling basically coming out and acting like he's a King James Bible believer? Well, because the lost world right now understands that there's coming a rapture and that there's going to be a lot of King James Bible believers leaving at the rapture. Now, what would be the best thing to do to cover up that? Raise up some of your own King James Bible believing preachers and have them here for after the rapture so that you can cover it up. You say, well, see, this guy's been in ministry for years. Look at him. He's a King James Bible-believing preacher. He didn't get raptured. It wasn't the rapture. You see? And I believe that that's what Martin Richling is. I mean, the guy, the guy wanted to be a Jesuit growing up. He's in the military, in the Marine Corps. Then he's a crooked cop, and he works with the FBI, and then he goes to federal prison. And in federal prison, there are many, many times that the FBI cuts deals with prisoners and says, we'll let you out earlier. We'll work, you know, you can become an informant for us. No, in fact, that's what happened to Randy Weaver out at, at Ruby Ridge. It was an FBI informant. It was a guy that was convicted of crimes and things like that. And he framed Randy Weaver. Fritz Springmeyer, another good example. Fritz Springmeyer got framed by a guy that was an FBI informant. Happens all the time. And you see, I believe that... Uh, these people, whoever they are, whatever agency, whether the Jesuits or the FBI or the CIA or, you know, God only knows, and, well, the devil knows too because he controls them. But uh, I believe that they're, they're raising up these false ministers of Satan and making them look like they're King James Bible believers in an effort to cover up when the rapture happens. And uh, another, you know what else is interesting? Martin Richling teaches against a pre-trib rapture. What a shock, you know? I mean, you wouldn't think, a, a, you know, if this guy's so, he understands the King James Bible and he's read it from cover to cover 300 times and, and he reads it eight hours a day and yet the Holy Spirit can't give you enough truth to show you that the pre-trib rapture is scriptural? Boy, you're something, aren't you? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. Show you real quick here. And like I've, I've been saying this, you know, I just want to read this scripture to con confirm what I've been saying. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Like Martin Richling. Martin Richling is a fool. I mean, people, if you can't tell that I'm saved in five minutes of looking at my channel, I feel bad for you. You know, I really do. It's ridiculous. Be getting more into that as we continue here. And like I said, you know, there are some things that these, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, double agents or, or uh, 
agent provocateurs, or I'm not sure what you'd want to, what would be the technical term for them. But these guys that are being raised up by Satan to try and make Bible believers look bad, you know, they can fake it pretty good, but you can't fake the Holy Spirit, you know, the true Holy Spirit. It'll come out, you know, and you'll be watching, and it'll be like, eh, this guy isn't hacking it. Galatians chapter 5. Now, verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, like Martin Richling has, variance, emulations, wrath, wrath, you know, strife, kind of like having your whole channel being about, you know, calling out men as heretics. And you come to my channel and you say, Brian Denlinger the heretic, Brian Denlinger the heretic, Brian Denlinger the heretic. <laughs> you know, get a life, man. You know, give me a break. Why don't you just preach the word and let the Lord sort, sort things out, if you're really saved, and you're not. But if you are saved there, Marty, why don't you just preach the word? Huh? You pathetic little imp. Strife, seditions, heresies. Hello, Marty. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you have any law, love there, Marty? Love of money, perhaps. That's why you were guilty of extortion, shaking people down, you know, like you're still trying to do to the body of Christ. Uh, joy. Hi, Marty. Hi. Peace. Long-suffering. Gentleness. People, watch my videos and compare them to Martin Richling's videos. I get sarcastic. Sure, I get sarcastic. But I also have a spirit of gentleness. Okay? <laughs> Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And, you know, the big thing here that uh, the loser Martin Richling comes out with, is he says that uh, Romans chapter 10 has nothing to do with your salvation. The, the, the prayer of salvation is a work. It's a work. Ugh. Okay, let's look at it. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. And I'm going to get more into this in the future when I have more time to actually, you know, go through his stupid videos and watch some of them. You know, because, you know, I let me just say this. Just simply praying a prayer of salvation, no, that doesn't do it. But that's not what my salvation video is about. I go through all the scriptures showing people you are a sinner, you cannot save yourself. And then after that, after we have established that they are sinners and they need to repent... Okay, of their self-righteousness, of that life of sin, of saying, I'm just good enough to get in. All I have to do is just believe and, and receive. You know, that's it. Just believe and receive. You know, see, then I lead people into a prayer after we've established the thing of repentance, biblical repentance. Right? And I've got tons of sermons on this thing. You know, Martin Richling is just another easy believism heretic, among other things. But uh, let's read here. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay? Salvation. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, mouth, this little thing right here, you see, mouth, see, this is called a mouth, Martin. Confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is, neither, uh, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be saved because prayer is a work. <laughs> well, according to Martin Richling, perhaps. No, it says, uh, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, what's the point here? The point is, let's go to Acts chapter 10, or excuse me, Acts chapter 20, verse 21. This is one of the most damnable heresies that has been spread around here in the last couple of years, and it's getting more and more prevalent, and I've kicked it time and time and time and time again. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. Testifying both to the, to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, that's two different things. Yeah, but it happens at the same time. You come to God as a sinner, you give up your self-righteousness, and you pray to God, 
See? How can you have repentance toward God just simply by believing? See? You have to come to God and say, God, I realize now that I'm a sinner. I, I know I can't save myself. You know? Is there some specific prayer that you have to pray? No. You pray the way that you know how. And if you don't know how, you, the Christian says, okay, I'm going to lead you in this prayer. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But see, what these guys are trying to do is they're trying to say it's belief. Just simply believe. Believe. Only believe. You know? Well, how's repentance come into that whole thing? See? See, that's the problem. And they say, well, repentance is a work. You're, you're trying to do works. When the Bible condemns works for salvation, it's good works for salvation. Not of works, lest any man should boast. What do you boast about repentance? You boast about being a sinner? You boast about being no good and having to pray to the Lord to be saved? No, what you boast about is, I've done good things. I've tithed at my church, and I've been a faithful member all these years, and I was baptized. And I, That's what you boast about. See, what is condemned in Scripture as works-based salvation is people doing good works to be saved. Somebody come, come to God and praying and saying, God, please have mercy upon me, a sinner. You know? That's not somebody uh, doing works to be saved. I mean, that's ridiculous. And I mean, you read there in Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13, nobody's going to come away with Martin Richling's, you know, belief here, with his philosophy. And see, too, another little point I want to make here. When I'm preaching and saying to people, you need to get saved by coming to God as a sinner, repenting of your self-righteousness, saying, I can't save myself, understanding that up here in your mind, and saying those sins that I've committed in my life, you know, my conscience-bearing witness, the Ten Commandments there that are written in my heart, you know, that those laws of God that I've broken have put me into a bad situation. And I need to come to God and pray to God that he will forgive those sins and I put my faith totally in Jesus Christ. See, belief is part of the equation there. I'm not excluding belief and saying it's just works. I'm not doing that. So this whole, this whole philosophy of Martin Richling is just, it's, it's beyond ridiculous. And what, what are they doing? What are they doing? They're trying to tell people it's just believe and receive. You don't have to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be born again. Okay? You say, I, I'm not convinced. It's only believe. Only believe. It's just believe. Well, what's the greatest uh, passage of Scripture in your New Testament on the subject of the Gospel? What is the Gospel? Where, it's, where is it defined? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 and 2 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. This is the gospel. Now look at verse 2. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Is it possible to believe in vain? Oh no, because everybody that believes is saved. You know, 75% of America right now is professing Christian, so bless God, 75% of Americans are saved. And you can certainly see the signs of that, can't you? No. The fact of the matter is there's a lot of people that have believed and they've done it in vain. Why? There's no repentance involved with their salvation. They haven't come to God as a sinner. They're there in their self-righteousness. They come and they say, sure, I believe in Jesus. But I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do. I'm not going to have any book tell me how to live. I'll just go on doing whatever I feel like doing. You're not going to tell me how to live. And you want me to believe those people are saved, huh? Why is it then that Paul talked about being in perils with false brethren? In perils among false brethren. Why is that? Hey, Paul, it's only believe. I mean, if they believe, then obviously they're saved. They could, there couldn't be false brethren if it's just belief. You see the mess you get into? And uh, one other thing here I'm going to cover. Romans chapter 16. This incredible idiot, 
Martin Richling comes along and he says that uh, God has an establishment commandment. And if you don't preach the establishment commandment, then you're not a legitimate preacher. That's what he says. And it's in first, or excuse me, Romans chapter 16, verses uh, 25 through 27. That's where the establishment commandment is. So let's work, look here for the words establishment commandment. You ready? Verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but is now made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Wait a second there. I was looking for the term establishment commandment. I must have gone past it. Or perhaps it's not in there. Yeah, it's not in there. And you look into what this establishment commandment is, it's basically some kind of a weird form of hyper-dispensational, you have to start out in the book of Romans and then you read forward and you go into Revelation, then you can go back and read other parts of the Bible. And, 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 you know, and Martin Richling is the man that it was revealed to. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, 2,000 years of church history and no one's ever seen this before. And God chooses Martin Richling, you know, ex-cop, you know, extortion, conspiracy, you know, whatever. You know, God chooses this great soldier of God to reveal this truth to. And all other preachers are illegitimate. D.L. Moody, sorry, he was no good. Uh, J. Wilbur Chapman, nope. J. Frank Norris, nah. You know, P Dr. Peter Ruckman, nope. Sam Gipp, nope. Sorry, all these guys are just stupid, you know, because they didn't, they didn't read the Bible through God's establishment, commandment. So they're all illegitimate. No, I think it's a Richling that's illegitimate. And Martin Richling is just one of a handful of ministers of Satan that God, or that, excuse me, yeah, the God of this world, I'll say it that way, that the devil is raising up. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, uh, you can... You can tell from reading your King James Bible that this guy is false. But don't discount the Holy Spirit within you bearing witness. And I know a lot of you have contacted me and, and told me how the Lord has just blessed you tremendously from listening to my ministry. Excuse me, my ministry. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's always amazing too. I mean, there are times when my wife and I will be having a conversation and we'll go in and check email or something like that and somebody in the email has written about the thing that we were discussing out here. Now you explain that. You say, what is it? It's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, one Spirit that's within us. And the Jesuits and the FBI and the CIA or whoever, they can't fake that. Their Spirit that's in them does not bear witness with our Spirit. So when you hear a guy like Martin Richling and you watch one of his idiot videos, and I'm not telling you to do that. I mean, you know, I'd stay away from the guy, to be honest with you. But if you ever click on one of his videos and watch it, you know, you'll feel a different spirit there. I mean, somebody sent me one of his videos uh, probably half a year ago, maybe longer. And I watched it just a couple minutes, and I was like, this guy is just a total jerk. I mean, I can, I can handle people being sarcastic and being arrogant and whatever else, but this guy's beyond that. It's a different spirit in him. I mean, he's just, ah, he's just nasty. Just a nasty creature, you know? He's a false prophet. He's a wolf, and he's coming after the sheep, all right? And men like him are, gonna be, are being raised up right now for after the rapture because after the rapture, Guys like him are going to come out and they're going to be like, oh, you know, saying whatever they want to say. You know, I don't even know how they're going to be used by Satan yet. But, uh, you know, he'll get a nice paycheck. And, of course, that's what he's all about. I mean, he was trying to shake down people. He's all about 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. You know, he's uh, in love with money and his God is mammon. And, you know, I'm sure he's pay probably being paid well right now to pose as a King James Bible believer. And uh, don't listen to the guy. Uh, just, uh, you know, I wouldn't have even paid attention to this guy if it hadn't been the fact that he's coming after the sheep that the Lord has put in the, under my ministry. 
you know, I know a lot of Christians are brand new and they've only been saved for just a short time and, and uh, there's a lot of things you have to learn and it just really frustrates me when, I mean, I don't care about people attacking me. That's just going to happen. Um, but this is the first time that somebody has gone to my subscribers and actually they're working hard to send them links to this stupid video that Martin Richling did. That ticks me off. Okay, that's what a wolf does. A wolf comes after the sheep and tries to scatter them, tries to turn them away from the ministry. And you say, has that happened, Brian? No, actually, uh, we've gone up, I think, since Martin Richling made his stupid video. I think we've gone up about 300 subscribers since then, something like that. So, uh, you know, it's not working there, Martin. If you're a real man of God, why don't you just shut up? Just shut up trying to expose everybody and prove how good and godly you are and just preach the word. And God will bring the increase if you're real and legitimate. Of course you're not. You know What you need to do is there, Martin Richling, you need to realize that you are a sinner and that no amount of money in the world is worth what you are doing. You are going to get left behind. You are being used of Satan right now. And what's going to happen to you is the people that you work for that you think are you know, you're being loyal to them, they're going to turn on you eventually. And you're going to be thrown out. And Satan, who you're really working for, he hates your guts too. The best thing that you could do is just humble yourself before the Lord, come to Him as a sinner, pray, and ask for His forgiveness. Come to Him and say, I've been fake. I'm a fake. I, I, I know this is probably, you know, it might cost you your life. Because you're probably under some kind of con contract or whatever else. I don't even know how the thing works. But the point is, you're false. I can see through you. So can other members of the body of Christ. They can see through your little scam that you are. And if you don't get saved, you're going to go to hell. And you're going to burn. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to burn very, very hot. <laughs> uh, because you're faking. You're faking being a Bible believer. And the Lord takes that very ser seriously. Okay. Uh, remember that uh, it was Lucifer that said, "Ye can be as, or he wanted to be like God. I will be like the Most High God." It's very dangerous to try and fake being a Christian or fake trying to be the Lord. You know, very, very dangerous. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, I am going to come out with a video in the future on the subject of the sinner's prayer, and I'm going to give you the scriptures for it. And I'm going to give you the warning that, you know, yeah, just praying some prayer without any preaching on sin, without any repentance, yeah, it is dangerous just to pray a prayer. You know, you get to some guy, it's every head, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, would you pray this prayer with me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I mean, that is false. I am against that. Okay? But when you get somebody to a point where they understand that they're a sinner, and they understand that they cannot possibly be good enough to get to heaven on their own. And at that point in time, they realize, I'm not right with God. And they call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. That's not works-based salvation. That's true biblical salvation. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all part of the same deal. You can't be saved until you are a sinner. It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Ye must be born again. Without the new birth, without becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn. It's just as simple as that. And I don't care who comes out with what, I will never back off on the issue of repentance to salvation. I'll never do it. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Jesus said, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. It's right there. So, you better get right. That's going to be it. I'll be making some more videos when I can get the time to. So, please keep praying for the ministry. We will keep everybody posted as much as we can. Thank you.